On this week's hot list, end game. Experts are saying the COVID-19 pandemic may be over. What now? Space Jam, the moon is again the mission. Is Indonesia even in the game? We ask space advocate Anne Camaro. And pungent king, durian season just about here. Why it's definitely a love-hate affair with this fragrant fruit. Hello and welcome. This is Hot Indonesia. I'm Dalton Tanunak in Jakarta. Let's get to it. My co-hosts, Millie Lukito is back, CEO of the Mobiliati Group from her home in Jakarta, and Linda Ibrahim, writer and business consultant based in Jakarta. Hot topic number one, end game. The number of global cases of COVID-19 has fallen to its lowest point in more than two years. Here in Indonesia, daily cases are averaging below 2,000 from a peak of more than 50,000. The World Health Organization says the end of the pandemic quote, is in sight. U.S. President Joe Biden stated it's over in his country. Uh, but let us not forget that 6 million people have died due to the coronavirus and uh, 150,000 here. But I will agree with Joe Biden that uh, the pandemic is over for the most part with vaccinations, short illness and recovery times. I say it's over. Millie, what do you say? I think the pandemic is already done. Uh, we should really say goodbye to it. Uh, thank, grateful for for it that we are uh, here, survive and healthy. But I think not. Then what makes it still a challenge is the trauma. Uh, psychologically speaking, a lot of people are still traumatized because they they lost loved ones, uh, family members, uh, office co-workers. So the psychological effect and the, uh, the impact from COVID-19 will be felt, I think, from years to come uh, in the future. And it will impact, I think, it will impact uh, business, it will impact how uh, we travel, and it will impact a lot of decisions made in, in the area of health. For example, nowadays, uh, if we have uh, small kids, uh, babies, we have to think of vaccination if, uh, even when the babies are still six months, uh, seven months old, and uh, the risk involving it. Babies already get that from other vaccinations. I mean, we, we get it as babies. Vaccination, yeah, but COVID-19 vaccination is still somewhat new, and we don't know the long-term impact of it. So, uh, again, the psychological uh, residue out of COVID-19, we will feel, I think, more years to come. Point, point taken. Now, Linda, you've been very cautious in your dealing with the virus. You didn't go out, you didn't take trips, and, and, and sadly, you lost a family member. Are you ready to move on from pandemic measures? Uh, yeah, I think I've been gradually, as you know, and I mentioned this on the, um, on the show, that I've been gradually taking steps outside. Uh, I mean, I, I've been traveling three times already the past couple of months, and I'm actually going again this weekend. Um, I think uh, a lot of people have been uh, as cautious or even more cautious than I, than I have been. Uh, they just don't really talk about it. But one thing, though, um, on a larger scale, what, where Indonesia is at the moment, uh, I, would be, I think it, it would be best if we actually get done with the booster vaccine for all of us, you know, not the fourth. I've gotten my booster, but I know a lot of people outside Java haven't. So I think once Indonesia gets that done, hopefully sooner than than later, then I think we can we can safely say that it's no longer a threat for uh, Indonesia at large. I whenever I talk about COVID, I try not to project it too much on how things can be made easier for me because I do live in the central of Jakarta. I mean, I get hospitals in eyesight. I can go, but that's not the case for a lot of Indonesians living in far-flung uh, cities and islands, you know, and whenever we talk about COVID, I always think it's now safe for them. Uh, and often those are the folks who haven't gotten their second shot and even the booster. Even yeah. Yeah, some of them yeah. haven't even got their second shot. Or maybe even the first. 
Okay. Now, government pandemic restrictions remain at level one, the lowest in the program. Millie, um, compare this to you know what we have to still do. Compare this to the other countries that you've been visiting in recent weeks. Well, I think uh, I went to Europe uh, and I also Singapore. Uh, even the United States, all of them, I think, have resumed normal life. Uh, so health-wise, going to the airports, they no longer uh, ask of uh, our COVID uh, vaccination anymore. But again, I can feel uh, uh, the, how, how people are still quite, in a way, um, scared or not 100% uh, ready yet. Psych- again, psychological, to uh, to resume life uh, as before uh, COVID. Yeah, but but, but again, uh, nobody wears masks anymore. Uh, even in the airplane, you know, I took uh, I was in Turkish airline. Uh, the uh, the the flight attendants, the captains, uh, they they no longer wore masks anymore. Wow, I, that, that's wow. surprising. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. So you yeah, know, I, uh, in a way, life has uh, resumed. Uh, it it has started uh, to be to be normal again. In many parts of the world. In many many parts of the world. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm just back from Bali, and and Bali is is pretty much maskless, and, and there are no uh, entrance requirements. You don't need to scan anything. You don't need to show your yeah, your vaccination records. That island is operating kind of pre-pandemic. Um, Linda, to wrap this up, uh, you know, that, of course, is business-driven. But the case numbers hold it up, right? Uh, case numbers uh, steadily going down. That is for sure. But what I'm worried is just the booster vaccine. Uh, our number is not even half of the number that got the second vaccine. So it's still pretty low. And who you? We have to remember that the, the ones that are not getting the vaccine yet are the ones that are actually living with the less uh, health facilities. So it's actually even double jeopardy for them. You know, so uh, Joe Biden can say it's over for the United States, but United States health facilities, it's not perfect, but it's a whole lot better than what we have here in Indonesia. So I don't think it's a, it's a fair reference, you know, to say that we should go and uh, declare that we're pandemic free. Well, that's what we're debating. And I, yeah. I, I think we sh- you take your own personal precautions. I would still mask in a crowded room or people are coughing or even in the airplane, which uh, to and from Bali, I still wore a mask. Okay, Hot Indo will continue shortly with Space Jam. Does Indonesia have any dreams to explore the universe? We ask space advocate Ann Kamaro next. Sama dengan The Indonesia Channel Saya mendorong semua entitas Semua entitas untuk bergabung dalam upaya ini Dengan mempromosikan produk dan layangan mereka Di platform digital yang unik ini I love Indonesia I love the food Hmm, yummy Ingredients. Now I'm ready to cook. Let's go to the kitchen. It's done. Let's meet to eat. Foodipedia on the Indonesia Channel. I'm 
Trần Minh Ngân ở VCC Net Việt in Hà Nội. I'm Thái Rát Thống Gia of Thailand's Thái Rát TV in Bangkok. I'm Monica Samboret from the National Television of Cambodia in Phnom Penh. I'm Raymond Go of Malaysia's TV Tiga in Kuala Lumpur. I'm Glenda Chong of Singapore's Channel News Asia. I'm Raisa Chintami of the Indonesia Channel at the ASEAN Secretariat in Jakarta. This is your weekly look into the dynamic Southeast Asia region. ASEAN Today on the Indonesia Channel. The best of Bali takes viewers on a special guided tour to the treasures of the Island of the Gods. Well, the romantic dinner is beautiful. The best of Bali, only on the Indonesia Channel. You are watching Hot Indonesia with Millie, Linda, and me. Here's hot topic number two, Space Jam. America's space agency has its sights set again on the moon. It will launch a mission scheduled for next week with an unmanned capsule in preparation for future flights with astronauts aboard. NASA is talking about a lunar space station looking beyond to a mission to Mars. A Land Rover, ladies, is already on Mars, and the powerful James Webb Space Telescope is sending back incredible Images, interest in the universe and beyond is sky high once again. And Kamaro is founder and CEO of Antarexa, a space education and advocacy company based in Bali. And thank you for joining us. Um, you just held seminars this past weekend, another uh, few more this weekend focusing on space. First question, why are you such a space junkie? I've always been all mesmerized with the uh the sky, I think I the first time I saw the Milky Way was in grade 10. So and it was really, really amazing and beautiful. I've never seen anything like that so up close. And since then, I was quite fascinated with um, space. And, um, and also my uh, late father is an aerospace engineer. So I've always uh, seen a lot of, you know, planes at home and you know, I grew up also traveling a lot in planes, so you know, aerospace um, is, is something that I kind of grew up in. Okay, okay. Um, does Indonesia even have a space program? And if not, why not? We, we have space activities. Uh, we can't really say it's a space program, but we are trying to... Uh, we have a space agency that is now uh, merged into a bigger agency called Research and Innovation National Agency, BRIN. Mm -hmm. um, but it used to be its standalone, LAPAN. But we do have space activities. We, um, we have uh, downstream space, uh, or midstream, uh, about like satellite network operators. I, we wouldn't call it like big satellite industry because it's literally telco. But we're trying to we're trying to, and the government is trying to, you know, inspire the younger generation to also start thinking about uh, building space startup. And, and I guess, it, to be fair to the country, I mean, we have bigger priorities. I mean, than looking beyond, we can barely uh, get clean water and, 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 and put food on the table and, um, and control our pets. Uh, whoever's dog is barking, but um, okay, Linda, Linda, question for Anne, please. Uh, Anne, uh, I was wondering if you could tell us a bit more about what you do in Bali in particular to promote space. Okay, so um, we're trying to promote Bali as a space portal, and eventually we want to build a space campus here. Uh, we see the uh, we see the uh, potential of the Bali night sky because we have Nyepi here, uh, and you know during Nyepi uh, we 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 have the potential of astrotourism given the weather is you know permissible it doesn't rain and it's not cloudy, but um, that that alone aside from its cultural. Um, you know, known, significant, but uh, the night sky is also worth promoting. And that is a good start. And Bali is such an international community, which suits pretty well, very perfectly uh, with the international space community. Space is a very, very, um, you know, like it's, it, is a, it is a huge international community for many different countries. Uh, racial, ethnic background, we don't even, there's no border, it's a borderless community. So, um, they, and the international community love Bali, and I think Bali, uh, you know, it, it has always been uh, centric 
in the culture and arts, but not really enough science community here and technology. So we kind of want to also bring it um, to the island. Millie, question for Anne. I'm always uh, fascinated with the fa uh, galaxy far, far away. As a uh, kid, I really immersed on Star Wars and mm. Star Trek a lot. The space is fascinating for me. But my question would be, do you think uh, there are enough uh, Indonesians, our own, own countrymen, uh, who are a as fascinated as uh, us when it comes to space? Uh, because, I don't know, in America, they especially have this infrastructure called NASA, mm -hmm. you know, just to study the space and to, to, to be able to understand it more. But how about here in Indonesia? People care enough? People know enough? Understand enough? You think? We do have, uh, we do have an equivalent of NASA, which was called LAPAN. Prior and now it's you know it's Orpa Organisasi Riset Penerbangan Antariksa. It's under BRIN, which is the bigger agency. Yeah, and then mm -hmm. there's INASA, which is like a special unit that deals with UN, with the UN Office of Outer Space Affairs. They deal with peaceful peaceful use of um, outer space agreements and etc. That's administrative, but in terms of space in itself, it's a political effort. You know, and there's there has to be a political will, and that is what is lacking here obviously but it's also um the space is the space industry is changing the game to what it's called new space where it's not just government actually a lot of it is private sector so you can't really we can't really sort of corner the government in terms of obviously the biggest budget would have to come from the government but we also question the private sector the the entrepreneurs, the conglomerates who are who are interested or who are willing to support such startups, who are willing to support to ignite the space industry here in Indonesia, because it's no longer a government thing. But you know. well, yeah, and I mean, sure, you got Elon Musk, you got SpaceX, you got uh, um, other entrepreneurs funding their own private tourist astronauts in space. Why couldn't they do it here? Uh, and, and being close to the equator, it's ideal for launches, as, as we know. Um, uh, you know, I, when, when I was a kid, I, I wanted to be two things, a baseball player or an astronaut, right? And, and I applied for the journalist. Yeah, I, still, I, I applied for the uh, journalist in space uh, program, and then the Challenger incident uh, killed that. But um, let me ask you, last question to wrap up, and uh, With the huge global interest in space in general at the moment around the world, when will Indonesia see its first astronaut? I, I can't, I can't tell, but five years, here, 10 years, we don't, well, the, the country doesn't have a, uh, an astronaut program. So astronauts are usually uh, sent by the country. Okay. To represent that, uh, that country uh, and also ambassador of humanity. Indonesia doesn't have an astronaut program, but now that private, con uh, private companies are having their space tourism, um, you know, like commercial uh, products uh, for suborbital, uh, you can actually be an astronaut. And next year, well, there's a competition that we are also affiliated with. It's called Space Hero. And that's basically everyone around the world uh, above the age of 18. They can uh, participate in this competition and uh, maybe win a ticket to go to the International Space Station. Wow, that'd be great. And I, I mean a real astronaut, you know, uh, getting out of the atmosphere. I mean, yeah, I mean, pre, you know, pre-orbital is one thing, um, but it's possible. And, and another way they could do it is if an Indonesian uh, went to school in the States and then uh, educated there and then entered the space program there. That's another entry point, right, Anne? Yes, but they might have to change their citizenship. Yeah, okay. That, that. Dalton, if I may add, we actually had a lady, a scientist, Indonesian scientist, uh, to join the NASA program. That was back in the 80s. Her name was Dr. Pratiwi Sudarmono. Yes. Uh, but she never got to go because I think uh, her program was later canceled. She was supposed to go after Challenger. You remember after Challenger blew up and they uh, sort of like uh, froze the entire program. And I think 
her um, her program was one of those that got shut down after Challenger. Oh, I didn't know that, and that is yeah. a, a good point. She's still and alive. I'm... She's still oh, alive. Okay. Dr. Pratiwi Sudarmono. Uh, I don't know what her PhD That's... was for. Uh, it's not, uh, yeah, but oh, it's a it's a point of pride too. Besides being a scientific uh, achievement, I mean, countries love to say that you know we have a man or woman in space and. Hopefully, it'll come someday soon for Indonesia. Anne Kamaro, founder CEO of Antarexa, thank you very much for your time from Bali today. Thank you for inviting me. Our program will continue shortly with Pungent King, why you either love or hate this fragrant fruit. Indonesia Channel. Indonesia Channel. You're watching Hot Indonesia from Jakarta. Hot topic number three, Pungent King. It's known to ground airline flights and is banned in some hotel lobbies. Durian is a Southeast Asia fruit that's big business with export revenue in the hundreds of millions of dollars. It's also something you love to eat or hate to be near. Now, Jakarta's durian season runs generally from October through February. Ladies, first, you know, the exterior is scary looking and painful if you touch it or sit on it. Who would sit on it? And then you open it and then the unique smell hits you. Millie, I guess this is one of those things you have to have grown up eating. Uh, yes. And durian is my middle name, by the way, uh, so <laughs> that audience knows. I love durian. What is not to love about durian? Durian, fresh durian. Uh, those they make into mooncake, they make into kue lapis, they make into any kinds. I love them. I love them big time. Well, you know, make make it into other products. You know, it kind of mitigates the the initial um, aroma. Now, um, you know, I tried it when I first arrived here in Jakarta. Uh, I bought it from the street. It was warm, and I nearly passed out on the first bite. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> Linda, Linda, do you know any newcomers who actually like this fruit? Actually, yeah. I mean, I mean, I've got some expat friends who didn't grow up eating durian that fell in love with durian, and whenever they went to Indonesia, they would just search for durian. Uh, but I have to say, if you didn't grow up with it, you know, the, the a host of factors would just deter you. You know, the looks, uh, the scent, you know, and also uh, that it's not a fruit that you can just bring it home and uh, crack open by yourself unless you're trained to do that. If you know what I mean, right? It takes a certain technique to do that properly. Otherwise, you're just gonna hurt yourself. And uh, 
Uh, okay, well, tell tell me how how does it smell? Okay, for those who never smelled it, and how does it taste when it hits your tongue? Or well, what's the uniqueness of it? Just try to just put it into words, Linda and Millie. Go ahead. Oh, the, it looks it, it tastes so buttery, creamy. Buttery. It, it does. And it it, does. it, it has yeah. It has this special taste and aroma that is so addictive. Well, yeah, I say buttery for Toro. You know, nice fresh sashimi, but I wouldn't call durian buttery. It's, but you, durian, you, no, the fresh I durian, think, the good ones are buttery, Dalton. I, I okay. think for some people, the otoro might be challenging. You know, again, this yeah. is all an acquired taste, right? Yeah, hey, yeah, I grew up eating sashimi and other. Yeah, okay. So it it goes back to my point. You kind of have to grow up eating this to really love it. But I I have some uh, a lot of foreign uh, guests, uh, foreign friends. They immediately. When they taste durian, they say, "Hmm, this is something that I will like." Okay. Hmm. 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 You know what? For me, buttery, you know, creamy. That's true. Addictive. Uh, not in the addictive part for myself, but I agree on the first two. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. Just don't. And just don't color. take it in your carry-on baggage in the airline. They'll they'll, <laughs> they'll pull it off, right? And it's happened before. It is feedback time now with many comments on our discussion on the presidential chances of House Speaker Puan Maharani. Farah said this on YouTube, Our country doesn't look democratic anymore. It's as if the country is run by a monarch where only the descendants rule. Wulan added, Do not run because the people are already disappointed. Here's how to contact us with your feedback. Email at hotindo at the Indonesia channel.com or comment through our Hot Indonesia or Indonesia channel, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube pages. Final words, Millie. So, uh, every October the 2nd, uh, we celebrate or commemorate Hari Batik, which is Batik Day, uh, Hari Batik Nasional. But what I'm thinking is we should, we should wear Batik as often as we can, you know, and we don't have to have a, one day to commemorate Batik. But we have to honor wearing batik like Dalton here. He's wearing a very beautiful batik. And we all should 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 wear anything batik on a daily basis. That's what I think. And I guess you were in a rush today, Millie. That's why you're not wearing batik. Okay, Linda, final words. Um, okay, so uh, we had uh, a sad news of the passing of the Queen Elizabeth uh, the week before. But this week. Indonesia lost uh, a prominent scholar, Professor Dr. Azumardi Azra, PhD. Uh, he's a Muslim intellectual who's been, I mean, who was very uh, knowledgeable, very smart, um, and uh, very kind. You know, and the, not the type that would just go and shout at people. You know, he would, he would. He's a scholar, and I, I can't put in, in words, you know, how sad I was when I heard that he died. He also, because of his work for religious uh, pluralism and tolerance, he was one of the very few Indonesian scholars who was awarded commander of the Order of the British Empire by the Queen Elizabeth. Uh, so for Professor Azumari Arzra, you know, you'll be remembered, you'll be missed, and thank you for your service for this country. And my final words, Keiro no hi was celebrated in Japan this week. Respect for the Age Day honors elderly people and the contributions and wisdom they have provided in their lives. Seniors there get gifts or little parties on this occasion. There's no set age for when someone is considered elderly, so if anyone wants to pass on their good wishes, I am happy to accept. <laughs> And that is Hot Indonesia for this week. For Millie Lukito and Linda Ibrahim, I'm Dalton Tanaraka. Thank you for watching. Please join us again next time.